Hello and welcome back to another episode. I don't know. It's not a show. Another CCS Alumni Live. My name is Brandi Keeler. I am Assistant Director of Admissions here at CCS. And CCS Alumni Live is a semi-weekly uh, interview series where we talk with graduates from CCS's various majors to see what their journey has been like from high school to career. And today we have an amazing guest uh, who will be talking about their career. I see our guest just joined us um, about their career and transition to uh, their path in animation. So I'm going to introduce our guests and then add them into the live and we will ask questions, get some answers and have a, a pretty fun conversation. Um, so today's guest is Joshua Mulligan, or Josh as I like to say. Josh is an animator who graduated from CCS in 2014. Uh, since graduating, Josh has gone on to start his own animation and illustration studio, or animation and design studio, excuse me, called Mulligan Art. Uh, his animated films have screened at a variety of Michigan film festivals. His work received honorable mention in Adobe's annual design competition back in 2014. In 2016, he actually received the very uh, highly respected Kresge Art in Detroit's fellowship for film. And Josh has worked as a storyboard artist for the Safe Pregnancy Foundation. He created two animated short films for a feature documentary by AE Films and Vice Media entitled Author, the J.T. Leroy Story. Josh has also animated for a children's educational TV show called Bug Bites, which airs on PBS Detroit and has done so much, much more. So without further ado, I am going to add our guest, Josh, to the live. I see a lot of folks are joining in. Hello, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. It says connecting. There we go. Hey, Josh. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. <laughs> it's good to see your face. It's nice to see, <clears throat> nice to see you too. Can you, you know hear me okay? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. You know what's funny? I uh, I do these IG lives in my li my dining room. Uh, okay. And there have been a few IG lives where you've been un un uh, unintentionally featured because your piece that you did uh, that I have in my dining room oh, is yeah. like sometimes I tap to like people's stuff and then your piece is like in the background. I'm like. That's Josh's work. Um, oh, that's so that's so nice. <laughs> yeah, so it's, I'm excited to talk to you today. Yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna the way this works is I'm gonna ask you a few questions and then I'm gonna open it to the audience who's okay. tuning in. So anybody who's tuning in, if you have questions you want to ask Josh about, you know, animation or um, attending CCS, etc., you can add those in the little question box at the bottom of your Instagram screen, and I will make sure Josh answers those live. And I know a few folks submitted questions ahead of time, so you already got people asking questions. Right? Oh, uh oh. <laughs> no. um, but I'm this is a uh, first, just to, yeah. to oh, yeah. level set. Can you hear me okay? Is the I can audio hear you perfectly fine? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I was looking at your portfolio, like your website, your resume, the bio you sent over. And you did a lot of different types of both animation and illustration for different clients, right? Like mm -hmm. kids show, music videos, infographics, storyboards, etc. cetera. Um, and I know so mm -hmm. many students who apply to CCS who are looking at animation, they only think about working in like a big animation studio. Like they don't, they don't have a context for what else animators can do. So could you talk about what it means to be a freelance animator and, and run your own business as an animator and illustrator? Uh, oh yeah, 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 definitely. When I first started CCS, like the goal was like, oh, Pixar, oh, Disney, oh, Sony. And uh, the more I, learned at, at CCS and went to networking events and went to um, just different presentations about a, animation as a career. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned that there is way more than just a big studio. Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's a lot more opportunity uh, for independent animators, mm -hmm. small groups, small uh, communities that work together to build projects. Uh, and that, and when I, finished CCS, that's what really interested me. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want to, I want to make my, uh, I want to use my talent, my skill and, and kind of be, um, my, my own creative agency, I guess. Mm. Um, and that's what I've been pursuing and been enjoying it, um, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and producing some cool work along the way. I shared uh, quite a few pieces of some of the stuff you have on Instagram. I'm like, <laughs> 
how long does it take you? To, like, I don't know if anybody got a chance to watch some of Josh's uh, animation pieces beforehand, but your work is very intricate. And I know from oh. a basic perspective that like animation or film can be like 30 frames per second. But I think about 30 oh, yeah. frames or even 20 frames of what you do in, in my brain can't grasp it. Like, how long does it take you to do some of your longer form oh. projects? Yeah, like um, those film, th those two films you mentioned for the uh, the documentary. Mm -hmm. um, I, I worked on it was two short films. There was a there was a three minute and then a two minute, so mm -hmm. five minutes. So five minutes of animation. It took a year to complete a whole year. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What? So, and then <laughs> yeah, and then you're watching the movie, you see it go by, and you're like yeah, <laughs> there is that. That's three months. <laughs> There's four months. Um, but that's something that with freelancing, you need to understand how long artwork takes to create. Mm -hmm. So like I learned uh, you have to you have to be able to uh, you definitely have to think about the budget and how much you can do uh, in that time. Mm -hmm. So that one was one of the bigger projects, but you don't always get that much time to work on yeah. uh, freelance projects. Um, so you definitely adjust. Um, and it, that's uh, something that you that I've been kind of continually working on as, um, as I'm still going. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. That's, that's it. A year for five yeah. minutes of footage? For five, yeah. Yeah. Cause you, well, you got to think as an independent, you're doing the character designs, yeah. background designs, you're compositing, you got to do the character animation. You got to you got to time it all up. And the storyboarding part that was, that probably took, a month and a half just to settle on how the mm -hmm. shots were going to be and mm -hmm. what was going to happen. Uh, and then the, like the rough animation that took like three or four months and then cleanup is the most time consuming part, coloring, lining that take that you, once you get to frame uh, like 36 of 174, you're like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> like this, you have to, you, do, you gotta take breaks. You gotta, you gotta, stay healthy because uh, I know a lot of animators are just always they, they never leave their screen mm -hmm. uh, or you can it's really easy not to leave the screen because mm -hmm. uh, it's fun uh, and you're making some cool stuff but it's always good to <laughs> get up <Break. laughs> move around <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was one of the uh, pieces of advice from our last alumni live um, yeah someone was like take care of yourself. I was like, that is great advice for artists in general. Um, yeah. But yeah. But that, that also speaks to the level of love and passion you have for something. If you can, you know, work on something that intently for that long, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's awesome. Ha what, what would you say has been your favorite thing to work on in your career? Because again, you've worked on so many different projects and assignments. Uh, my favorite thing? Oh, man. Um, it was probably... Um, with that, that Craigsby Foundation, I was able to start like a personal project. Mm -hmm. And any, like, that's the one thing once you, after graduation, like the, uh, the time you get to work on personal projects is precious. Mm -hmm. And I really, I think I, I took it, I did as much as I could at CCS, but mm -hmm. thinking back, I could have even, I could have did more. I could have made more of my own ideas, my own projects. Um, and that's something that, uh, I don't take for granted anymore after. So anytime I work on you know, personal stuff, that's, that's the best. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know I've had even some current students say like taking time for personal projects is, <laughs> is something that you have to be intentional about as, mm -hmm. as a working artist, right? Cause you, yes, you have your, your career and your practice that's paying mm -hmm. your bills and things like that. But then also like, just your creative exploration for the sake of doing so. So definitely yeah. understand. And congrats again on being a Kresge fellow. That's a huge deal. I know there's so oh, many yeah. people I, who are I'm still in that. shock. <laughs> okay. I'm still like, <laughs> like, whoa. It's the talent, man. You're, you're crazy talented. Um, so another big question that I have for you, I know we talked a little bit about being a freelance animator versus working in a, a, a big, you know, animation mm -hmm. studio. But another question I have for students is about, being an animator and staying in Michigan, right? Because a lot mm -hmm. of students, they come mm -hmm. to Detroit, either they're from here or they, they move here and fall in love with the city, but then they feel they have to, you know, move out to LA in order to, to find opportunities. So could you speak mm -hmm. to what it's like to pursue a career in your field and be in Michigan at the same time? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, I think my graduating class, I can't remember the number, mm -hmm. but a, a good portion moved out of state. 
uh, just because that's where a lot of studios, a lot of studios are in Atlanta, New York, LA. So there's a lot of opportunity out there. So it's, it's definitely was a, a decision to like, all right, I'm going to stay. I'm going to, I like Michigan. I like being around my family, like the area. Um, I'm going to see if I can make this work. Um, and what I found out is the best thing for like a freelancer in the state would be to have a strong web presence. Mm -hmm. uh, a, lot, a lot of my projects that I've got, like I've, that, uh, that one documentary, they were a, a production based in LA. Mm -hmm. So they were, I was just a remote worker mm -hmm. uh, for that, uh, for that production. And that's been, uh, I've, 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 I've worked on several like LA West coast projects and every, everything with, the animation that I do is, is digital at the end of it. So like, you really don't need to be somewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that's what, I think that's what everyone's learning from all this yeah. all the quarantine stuff <laughs> uh, is the creative. I think the creative um, industry, they just have, they have an advantage mm -hmm. as far as the work. Cause a lot of it can be done at home. Mm -hmm. If you have a good computer and a good setup, you're, you're good to go. You're ready to start producing, creating, um, and that's what's really excited about in the field in general mm -hmm. is you can you could live wherever you want. <laughs> but really, that's, that's awesome. And I think that'll be helpful for a lot of students here because I, I hear that concern a lot. They're like, I love my family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. In this field, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thanks it's for sharing that insight. And like you said, especially now, everybody is learning what remote oh, yeah. is like and what possibilities exist. So mm -hmm. even more opportunities are there. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so. You do both animation and illustration work, right? Um, mm -hmm. I have a lot of students who are torn between the two, right? They're like, I love mm -hmm. characters. I love drawing. And I'm not sure what to choose. Um, so what would you say, in your opinion, if you were to provide some insight on the difference between the two, um, is the difference, you know, if, if someone yeah. were looking to choose one, what would you say is the difference for you and why you, you focus on animation? Uh... I think the, the skills definitely go hand in hand um, I, with illustration. I know, I know like I don't really have a, like a traditional painting background, so I've never really painted anything. Uh, and that's, diff that's a skill that is something I, I, I want to work on, but more in a digital way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm, digital illustration is something that I'm more interested in. Mm -hmm. um, um, so that's go, like at CCS, that was one of the things that kind of I lacked. I didn't really study as much as I probably should. Uh, but that's because I was an animation major. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I wish I would have done a minor in illustration because mm -hmm. every elective I took was an illustration. Right. My, elec <laughs> my electives were figure drawing, perspective, gesture drawing. Those were all illustration classes. Mm -hmm. um, and those helped me out probably the probably equally as much as learning all the programs because mm -hmm. um, you can be technically good, but if you don't have the ability to like kind of draw out your ideas and flesh out uh, like character designs or background designs or props, um, then you, you're not as marketable mm -hmm. like as a freelancer. So you need to kind of be, you need to be able to, to flesh out all of that. <laughs> True. Um, yeah. Like you mentioned on the longer form piece, like, you were doing all the all the roles, yeah. right? So you had <laughs> yeah. to have that that breadth of skills. Um, mm -hmm. So that makes sense, yeah. yeah. And and yeah. for students who are tuning in who don't know, at CCS, for just about every major except uh, transportation and concept design, you can minor in another area. So you could major in illustration, minor in animation, or major in animation, and and minor in illustration. So it, it really is about what you want to focus your your energy on. Yeah, but um, yeah, I would highly recommend. I wish I. I had enough credits to mine. I just didn't declare it. I mm -hmm. wish I declared it. <laughs> You're like, just throw it in there. I did yeah. The work. I don't know why. I don't know what I was thinking. I was, <laughs> I wish I talked to the counselors more. <laughs> That's good advice thing. too. Always yeah. <laughs> talk with academic advising. Yeah. Um, okay. So you have such a, and I can talk about this all day, a beautifully unique style um, in your work. Like Ooh. there's nothing of yours that someone could look at and not know that Josh made, right? <laughs> Um, was that a style that you always had? Is it something that you cultivated at CCS? Like what, what was the process to, uh, create this unique style that you have? Um, yeah, I remember, I remember when I first, my first drawing was the characters of my, 
junior animated film. Mm -hmm. And those characters had this whimsical, detailed uh, look to them. Mm -hmm. um, and I showed some people and they're like, oh, that's really cool. And I was like, oh yeah, it is? I, I don't know. Like looking at your own stuff, like, I don't know what's nice or it's, I'm just like kind of feeling what, what, I, what, what I like. Mm -hmm. um, but when someone else says like, oh, that's really sweet. You're like, okay, maybe, I'd, maybe this is a style that I can develop. Yeah. So like at CCS, I got to make a whole uh, short film, Journey of Two, based on the style. Mm -hmm. And I, I got to hone in on how much time it takes to uh, uh, render all the detail, what's kind of my limits. Because mm -hmm. I got to a point where my hand was like shaking and I was doing like too many frames. Like your physical limits. Yeah, because yeah, there's a physical limit. And then there's, because the, like just animation just takes forever. So it's yeah. like, how much detail can you fit in in a practical uh, four week schedule? <laughs> so mm -hmm. you have to be, you have to be realistic. Um, um, but uh, yeah, that style um, is, yeah, definitely something that I worked on while I was at CCS. That's awesome, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, yeah. And it's truly unique. It's truly Thank you. unique. <laughs> Um, especially for animation. I'm just like, oh my gosh. I still, <laughs> my brain is never going to forget that you worked a year on five minutes of footage. It's not just <laughs> in my, my memory yeah. forever. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> some, some, some people are faster, but I, <laughs> I like, I, I wish I was faster at it, but sometimes it just, it's just it just so takes much detail though. Yeah. I'm like, how just take, you? <laughs> takes the time. <laughs> yeah. And you, you do a mixture of, I know you do 2d and 3d. Uh, but mm -hmm. you do a mixture of drawing those elements traditionally first and then transitioning them digital. So I can mm -hmm. just only imagine. Oh, yeah. Again, for those who are just tuning in, like this is a level of detail. And it's <laughs> like many tiny miniature lines and dots and shapes. And it's just mind boggling. Um, okay. So we talked a little bit about your career and your journey uh, through CCS. But I want to get in my imaginary time machine, which we get on. <laughs> Okay. On every IG Live with alum. Uh oh. Um, and we're going to travel back to high school and talk uh -oh. a little bit about what kind of <laughs> artist you were in high school. So tell me, were you doing art in high school? Were you in art classes? Like, what was your high school art practice like? Uh, well, my high school art teacher, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Fisher, she's retired now, but she was great. Um, in high school, I was. Uh, not a very good artist. I definitely, I was, I was in art classes because I liked them and I, they were very relaxing, meditative. Like you, like there was no competition. Like I played a lot of sports in high school and I, I, I chose to do art classes because I was like, well, there's no competition, yeah. not, not competing. I'm just relaxing and having a good time spending like I, in the class we had like giant tables so we'd just be talking making our art mm -hmm. and it was a, a super fun experience uh, but I wasn't I wasn't very I wasn't I was okay like I could draw just I could doodle I could I, I had like some just kind of raw ability but nothing I wasn't like there was a lot of art students in in high school that were way better at drawing than me could mm -hmm. render could render like these really cool eyeballs animals and i'm like uh <laughs> i'm not there yet i like uh, i'm drawing like little cartoons mm -hmm. <laughs> not really um but uh what got me what got me into animation was a uh a, when my senior year in high school i took an animation workshop mm -hmm. where i got to it was like an after school um event that i got to make an an animated film so i chose to do a 2d animated film and then that film uh ended up being uh selected to be screened at the traverse city film festival oh, wow. so they've been doing I film got, festivals for a while now <laughs> yeah yeah that was yeah that one so i got to travel up to traverse city see it and then that was it once it, once i saw it, i was like oh <laughs> i can i can make this and and there's this community and and an avenue like i'm doing it like this is fun um but uh, yeah, kind of lost my uh, train of thought. Um, that answered the question. That, yeah. that, was, that was okay. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you were. I think it's important yeah. for students to hear. Um, 
always ask about what students are doing at high school or even, you know, some students, they, they transfer from a community college. I think it's important for students to hear that because it's not everyone is the all-star artist in high mm -hmm. school. It's not everyone knows exactly what they want to do from the time they're five, right? Everybody's yeah. journey looks different. And so I think hearing your journey and hearing you say, like, I wasn't the, the top artist in the class. I doodled. This is what I like to do. And, yeah. you know, my work was validated through, you know, an opportunity that I had. Some mm -hmm. still may hear that and say, oh, maybe I need to look into classes because I like doing oh, yeah. this. But, you know, so I, I think it's it's powerful to share that perspective. And I, I appreciate oh, yeah. it. Um, I, would hi I would highly recommend looking at, because there's a lot of workshops out there now, mm -hmm. like printmaking workshops, mm -hmm. and that, that high school students can can sign up. And usually they're just like little projects. But that mm -hmm. little project, uh, like I didn't know my film was going to be, it just, I submitted it. I didn't know it was going to get in. It was mm -hmm. like, look, it was, <laughs> looking back, it's it's not that well made. <laughs> it's, 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 it's called The Cuddle Monster. It's Aww. about a, a it's about a monster who smells and no one wants to cuddle him and he has to he has he finds garbage friends who don't care what he smells like. <laughs> it's uh, so cute. Yeah, they they uh yeah, I think that the story is what kind of got it to the not the visuals. The visuals were very were very rough and and like elementary but mm -hmm. <laughs> it well, worked it's out. Did you mention that though because I I, I just did a uh uh, presentation last week where I was telling students, you know, the different things to, to look at to feel, figure out what major is the best fit for them. And for students <laughs> interested in entertainment, arts, and animation, I said, you have to be interested in storytelling. Like, stories yeah. are a big part of that field. Is that something that you mm -hmm. had an interest in growing up or in high schools? Like, stories, animation, fiction, anything like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. My look, like, very thankful for my dad like when I was bored in the house when I was a kid I was like oh I'm so bored my dad was like took me outside took me to a dirt got some matchbox cars all right we're playing a, a racing game and and we would play in the dirt and I'd imagine like this derby with all these cars and the cars were people and that really got me like oh you, a story can be from anywhere mm -hmm. from anything mm -hmm. um and and it, that kind of stuck with me throughout all my years is the possibility of a story or creating an imaginary scene um, out of nothing, mm -hmm. twigs and, and rocks, really <laughs> like a little mound in a sandbox can become the, the, the landscape of a sand dystopia. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's, it's really, it, it, it doesn't take much. Um, but if you don't, if you're not open to that, mm -hmm. if you like, if you think that stories are only, can only be like uh from like other stories mm -hmm. then then you're not you, i don't i don't think you'll have as much maybe as fun mm -hmm. uh like um yeah that's good insight <laughs> yeah. oh ice cream truck's coming it's my thing all right oh, so yeah. i have two more questions and then we're gonna move <laughs> okay. on to the questions that folks submitted um so what is one thing that you learned or gained at ccs that's really impacted your life your way of thinking, your art practice. Okay. Uh, wait, say that again? Just I kind of missed it. I, I, I say it with a long sentence. It was like, what's the most important thing you gained from your time at CCS? Oh, um, the most important thing I gained uh, was probably, um, probably just work ethic. Mm -hmm. Like being around other uh, artists and and seeing what it took to complete projects because uh, you get ccs was great because they get you they get you started pretty early mm -hmm. on 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 how to complete a project or it would just be a homework assignment but that projects that take a long period of time mm -hmm. so like you start out on like three week animation projects and then it builds up all the way to a whole semester mm -hmm. and then the whole semester turns you got a whole year to make what what you want to make and uh, I think CCS does, did a good job in preparing me uh, for completing projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was probably number one. Awesome. All right, last question for me. Knowing mm -hmm. what you know now, what advice would you give to your high school self or someone like you in high school looking to pursue their creative path? Mm -hmm. um, if I'm back in high school, if I had to give myself advice, um, man, um, I think I would, I think I would say um, I would have gone digital earlier. Like, I think I put off 
trying to learn some of the software because um, I was like, oh, I want to be more of a traditionalist. Um, but just the way that everything is, it's definitely wasn't the right. So I'm like, learn this. I should have learned. Like I had a graphic design class in high school where I had the opportunity to learn Photoshop. I didn't take advantage of it. I wish I did. I wish I, I wish I took advantage of that Photoshop class because it would have helped. It would have propelled me even further yeah. uh, having that knowledge. Uh, but I, I eventually learned it. But I learned it way later than I than I should have. <laughs> um, yeah. All righty. So we have some questions from the folks who are tuning in. And those of you who are just tuning in who haven't had a chance to ask your question, make sure to type them in the Q&A box for Josh. So questions about animation, being a CCS student, and graduating. So the first question is from I am Tia. And I am Tia. Yes. Tia asks, how do you know which animation style or technique would be best for you? Uh, I think it goes with what you like to watch, really. Um, do you, like, if you like 3D animation, the way it looks, the effects, um, and I would, I would start with the, the, uh, kind of entertainment that you take in. It could be a video game, uh, app, even an app on your phone. So if I would look at what you're watching or playing the most mm -hmm. and then, and then find out how it's made. And I, I think that would help out a lot. Um, cause if it's like a video game, uh, once you find out that all the different, uh, jobs or tools that are made to use that game and how it takes a team of like hundreds just to build the, the top games that exist. Um, I, th I think that, I think that'd be the best way to start. Question for you based on, on your answer, Josh, what is like, what are some of your favorite things to watch? Do you have favorite animated things to watch or content to yeah. consume? Yeah. Yeah. Um, for animation, I really like, um, I would say, uh, like, I'm a, I'm not kind of a, I like the older short film animations. So like my favorite animator is, um, Norman McLaren. He was, a, he was a French Canadian animator and he developed a lot of like the early experimental, uh, animation practices like drawing on film, uh, like sand animation and some of the older techniques, but the visuals were way ahead of their time. Like mm -hmm. now, like now people make what the, those look like kind of digitally, but back then it was um, kind of a brand, it was just brand, brand new, pioneer of animation. Uh, Cause animation hasn't been around that long. I think the, the Disney film, that one was 1930. And then before that they, they made uh, Thomas Edison did some animation when he was developing like uh, film, and that was like in in like nineteen nineteen or I don't I can't remember the exact date, but like early nineteen hundreds would be like the beginning of animation. So I really always like to look in the past and kind of see when thing when people didn't had no idea what, what to do and like to see their solutions and then how it can apply today. So I would say most of what I watch would be archival footage. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I bet you enjoyed. Yeah. You, did you take the history of animation when you were at CCS? Oh yeah, yeah. Steve Stanchfield. Very. I learned. I learned a lot. It, it definitely opened opened my eyes to all the different studios that kind of propelled the uh, the industry. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. righty, So this next question is from Chrysalis iris um and the question is mm -hmm. do you get to be a part of how the characters move and react or just create what the storyteller wants i know this is a unique question for you because you sometimes are the storyteller um uh, yeah yeah tell us a little bit about the process of what you create with character-based animation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh yeah mostly like for me when i storyboard i more i mostly storyboard for staging like mm -hmm. All right, character comes to the scene from left to right, and it's going to be here. Uh, and then the secondary story is is what the character does, and that happens in the animation process. So once you know like the staging and the frame of where it is, then you spend a lot of time working on your key poses, which key poses are just uh, they're just your story frames. That's 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 what they're called, uh, and they're, they're kind of what the character is thinking. What's the, the character going to do? Uh, and what action 
Um, mm. and that, and that can change, like that changes all the time. You're always reworking animation in those early stages, you're, whether a, how a character leans or looks a certain way, um, until you, and sometimes you can get stuck on that because you're like, mm. you're always changing how, how, what, how a character will react to a certain situation. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, so I would, I would say there's, um, you kind of do both parts as a, when you do, I, I've never, I'm trying to think, I've been lucky where I haven't had an, a part where like someone sent me a storyboard, oh, and this is how the character has to act. Usually they give you prompts. So like they, they might have a shot, like the shots planned out and they, they may, that's where your, uh, you, the animator, that's where you get to have your fun as you mm -hmm. get to implement uh, your own uh, take on whatever story that there is. Um, and that's how you handle that and how you uh, decide is, is very personal. It, it, and uh, it's something that you kind of always, like at CCS, you'll get a, that's when you get the best chance to work out that. Um, yeah. That's awesome. That's All right, I see another question came in from Bethany. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bethany yeah. asked a question that we answered a little maybe. bit earlier, but maybe you can speak to um, the question is, how do you freelance as an animator? I know we talked a little bit about this earlier, but how do you find oh, uh, the jobs and roles that you do as a freelance animator? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a, it's a multi-part. So like sometimes people reach out to me so like I have my animations on Vimeo, I have them on YouTube, I have them on my website, I have them on Behance. I, I, I forgot how many places I have my animations playing, uh, but uh, wherever I have it, there's an email. So you get a lot, of, so like uh, a, if, if your work captures someone's attention for even a moment, that might give them enough to like, oh, I wanna reach out, see, see, if, see if they're uh, interested in working on this project. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's happened uh, multiple times. Uh, and like, sometimes I've, I've never asked, but like, how did you find me? Like, how do you, where did you come from? Like, just like out of nowhere, mm -hmm. um, which, it, which a freelance, it can get scary. I had, I've had a few, I've had like one or two of like a scammer. So like, there's been more scams lately of a, like, they are kind of preying on like creatives. And that's something to be cautious of. Mm -hmm. is is to really uh, look at emails that come through and mm -hmm. if they're genuine or not. Uh, and you'll start, you get a good feel once you kind of go through a few projects. You're mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, this person is legit. This, this company, sometimes you got to research your own. Uh, but yeah, it was like this weird one from like France. And I'm like, this is not, this is, this is not, no. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> spam. <laughs> oh my gosh. So tell me yeah. this, Josh, how did you get your very, if you can remember, because um, mm -hmm. I know you've done a lot of things, but some of your earlier gigs, like your first gig or maybe your second gig, like I know you mentioned, you made mention of the documentary and uh, we talked about the work you did for PBS. How did you come across those opportunities? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so some you apply. So like there's animation is like a project to project. Productions always come up and then they have like an open like uh, call of artists essentially. So they're like, oh, apply. So you apply. You send your reel, you send your resume, and you may hear back. You may not. I've had, there's, I've been, I've applied to a lot of stuff, never heard anything. I've heard stuff. You, it's kind of like an interview, like you get to a part and they're like, oh, we're going to choose this other person. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like you gotta, you kind of have to understand, um, like you may not get every project you apply for or every mm -hmm. project may not be, because you don't know what their end what style they're looking for yeah. so all you can really do is focus on your own style and if they like it then good we're good to go if they don't you move on look for another and um the so those ones were for applying um the other one what was the other one there was you said i just mentioned oh, oh, PBS and the, oh yeah the, the documentary but i know you did some stuff, oh yeah you know you've done educational work like a lot of different types of animation uh, yeah, and oh yeah, another way was um, through f friends and family too. Um, like, I've had I'm, I've been working. A couple of clients have been 
friends of friends of friends who like, oh, I know somebody who animates. They like someone will re just refer you. Like you may not like that person. Like you don't maybe talk to them, but they know you do animation. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, I know somebody, and then you get a referral. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've had a few projects like that, and it's it's always worked out really nice because then you have like already somebody looking and an in, um, and and that's been good. I yeah. just thought of one that I was like, oh, wait, I know it. It's just of that personally for the oh, yeah. music video. <laughs> yeah, the music video. Your husband, friend I of a friend. I literally <laughs> was not thinking of that at all when I asked that question. As you're saying, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I know, uh, you know, I have my own freelance practice as an art director mm -hmm. and designer, and it, it is a mixture of ways that you come across uh, yeah. clients and opportunities. Um, but... I'm sure you'll have no shortage of opportunities because you're so freaking talented. Oh, thank and, you. And you have such a unique style that, you know, if someone is looking for a style like yours, there's nowhere else they can go. Um, yeah. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> I think that was the last question. Any other insights or, or Josh wisdoms you want to share before we end our conversation today? Uh, I, Josh Wisdoms would be, it, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a reliable one. I'd say always have your sketchbook. I, I never, I know every meeting I go to every, everywhere I go, it, it's in the car, it's in the backpack. Like, you know, I, a lot of my ideas have been just doodles. Like I've doodled out like the simplest things, but then they, once you, once you have the idea started, then that begins the process. Mm -hmm. uh, and you cannot eat, like you lose, to, I can't remember anything. If I like, oh, I'm gonna try to remember that. No, it doesn't yeah. work that way. <laughs> like, I would write, even if it's a little sentence of one line of one mm -hmm. character, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, never leave your sketchbook behind. <laughs> great wisdom, great advice. <laughs> Josh, I want to thank you so much for sharing your journey with us, with me and all the, the folks who are tuning in today. And for those who are watching the recording after today, um, because it's been really insightful. I've learned a lot about animation. I'm lear learning a lot about freelance animation um, and then just you as an amazing creative person. So thank you so much for agreeing to talk with me today. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah this is this is definitely new. Like. My my joke is uh, I got into animation to not be on the camera to to be behind the scenes. I got into I got into animation to hide in a corner and like draw. Well, <laughs> for what it's worth, you're good at being on camera too. You're good. You're oh good man, ends. that's um, just nervousness. <laughs> you're a natural. I didn't sense any nervousness. Yeah, great, okay. great, great that's insights. Good. That, that's good. Yeah. And I want to thank everybody um, who's tuned in live too today. Thank you all for tuning in and asking the amazing questions that you had. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to keep doing these every week. Yeah. If it's not a live, yeah. live, it's a presentation. So please uh, stay tuned. And if you miss any part of today's uh, video, make sure you watch the recording, okay? Thank you so much, right. Josh. Thank I hope you. you have an amazing summer, and I will you. talk to you later. Yeah, you too. I'll see you. Bye. Bye.